And so Camera Raw, uh, it's, it, for those of you that have been working in Lightroom, uh, don't be afraid of Camera Raw because it's, it's, it's almost exactly the same. It's, it has virtually the same uh, the, the tools and different things that you could do on it. it it's just a, a different interface and a different format. Um, so there's, there's uh, all the, the sliders over here, uh, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, clarity, every, everything that you're used to, uh, temperature and tint. Um, there's this great white balance um, feature where uh, you, you, you click on that and you, you pull down as shot is, is the way that the camera shot the uh, picture, which white balance th that was used, whether it, whether it was auto or daylight or custom balance, it'll show you what it was shot. And then this list will probably be familiar if, if, you, look, if you look through the white balance setting on your camera, it'll have all of these settings. It'll have auto, daylight, cloudy shade, tungsten, fluorescent. Uh, flash, and then a, a custom setting if you want to if you want to set a custom uh, white balance to a particular kind of kind of light, and so you could you could select any one of these, and it'll show you the picture uh, uh, if it were taken with that kind of setting, uh, and so this of course is the the beauty of shooting in RAW is that it's it's not at any particular setting is that you could you could set the white balance for any kind of setting uh, that you want, so you could you could pick tungsten. And you get this really bizarre shade of blue, or uh, fluorescent's always a good one. Although, although fluorescent now, I guess fluorescent lights now are more uh, more balanced toward daylight. Uh, but you pick cloudy, and it's and it becomes very yellow. So um, I'll usually leave it at, as shot. And the um, the first thing that I, I generally look at, uh, well, I, I've already determined if it's if it's a sharp picture uh, because I've I've blown it up in in photo mechanic. And I know the picture is sharp, so I just need to figure out what do I want to do with it. And uh, these are the kind of the decisions that, that you need to make when you're uh, processing the picture. Uh, but it's also part of a continuum of, of thinking that, that, you, that goes on with, with a lot of photographers, where in the film days, uh, we, you had film, you had, uh, you, were, you had to develop film or get the film developed, and then you had to make prints, or um, have somebody make prints, or you make the prints. Uh, was there a question back there? Uh, oh, okay, that's right. Oh, Preston's got one. Can you, uh, can you set uh, you know, things like uh, lens correction, things like that? In, in oh, oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, in, in camera raw, the, the actual uh, the, the tab is across the top here. And so it might be a little bit small. I, my, my computer, the, the resolution is high, so the, word, the letters get very small. But um, you can go across here, and uh, this is the tone curve that, that, that's, in, that's in Lightroom. Uh, detail, which is sharpening, noise reduction. Uh, there's a, there's a, a grayscale, and then hue saturation and, and luminance settings. Uh, there's, there's split toning. Uh, here's the lens corrections you were talking about. V vignetting, you, could, you can uh, adjust the vignetting if you need to do that. Uh, and there's uh, remove chromatic aberration. Uh, there's a really uh, handy thing that I, I think is on Lightroom now too. This is relatively new. It's called dehaze. If you're shooting, especially in light polluted areas, and you move the slide dehaze slider to the right to the plus side, it'll it'll start to eliminate a lot of light pollution in the, in the sky. Essentially, what it does is it's taking a lot of the the yellow out of the out of the picture. Um, and, but in a, in a kind of a subtle way, so it, it, you can overdo it, but, it, but the dehaze is, is, is very handy. Um, I was talking a little bit about what we used to do with, with film, and then with, when, with film, you had to really know uh, what your final print was going to look like, what you wanted in a final print at, before you shot the picture. So you, you, had, you had to know, uh, learn this whole continuum of processes that went on, for, um, from uh, as you're shooting the picture to making the final print, because everything you did along the way affected the final print, uh, the way you exposed it. If you if you overexposed it, if you underexposed it, what kind of light was uh, in the on the subject? Uh, if, if there was a lot, if there wasn't wasn't enough light, how you developed the film had a big impact on on the final uh, what the negative looked like and how the final print looked like. Uh, how you printed it. There were lot, there were different kinds of papers, from low contrast to high contrast papers that that could uh, make the picture look uh, a, a lot of different ways. And then how what your printing skills were. Um, 
it, to me it was I actually when I learned how to print in a dark room it, it sort of became fun it was it was very tedious because each print was very unique it, it, and, and we're pretty lucky in the digital age because you could work on a picture and then you, you can make a hundred prints of that exact same picture and they'll all look exactly the same um, if you wanted to print more than one picture of, uh, from a film negative uh, you had to be really kind of precise and, and try to do exactly the same thing print after print, which is which is really difficult. Uh, that's why the people like people like Ansel Adams, who were just master printers, it was uh, amazing to see their work because they could they could reproduce uh, pretty much what what they did in in certain prints. Um, I mean, print after print. In the digital age, the the the, the camera the and the exposure is what the film used to be. If you kind of think about it in that way. And the, the final image on our computer here is what was the print. Uh, th this is the print. So you're, we've sort of eliminated the developing part where you actually develop film. And, and uh, I, the good thing for our health is that we've eliminated the, the chemicals that you, you deal with. So um, the, they, they were pretty harsh on both uh, on your body and, and the environment and everything. So uh, the... the the way that a lot of photographers think about pictures is not, they're not thinking, what's the best picture I could take here uh, right now in the, in the landscape or, or with the sky? It's what kind of picture do I want? And then they're thinking in their mind's eye, they're thinking, what, can I, what do I want to show uh, in the sky on the landscape in, in the final, final image? And then they go, uh, they say, essentially work backwards. So what do I need to do? How do I need to expose this picture? What lens do I need? Where do I need to focus in order to get that final picture? And then uh, a, a lot of photographers are always thinking about, well, how am I going to process this image now? Now that they've got the picture, uh, how are they going to process it? So then by the time you get into this, this part uh, where you're in camera raw or you're, you've edited through your pictures, you're making your selections, you kind of know what you want to show in, in, the, in the picture and that you, what you want to enhance, uh, what, what you, if you want to brighten things, if you want to darken things, uh, change the color, things like that. And so uh, it's, it's sort of the, although this, this is also half, basically half of the process that you're going through to make an image that, you're, that you want to show people and try to get across your, uh, the story you want to tell in this picture or what, what you want to show in the picture. Um, like I said, the first the first thing I usually look at is is color. What does the color look like? Because if if uh, if this picture looks green, uh, it, if this picture showed up like this, you would say, "Whoa, that's kind of a strange color. It looks green. It looks yellow." Uh, and and then if we if we move this slider over here, you'd you'd say, "Well, that's that looks kind of awful. It, that something something's wrong with that color." Uh, usually, people see something and say, "Oh, something's wrong with that." That's your eye. Uh, let's see. There's a there's a couple things that you could do. I, the, at home, I have a, I use a, a bigger monitor, and then then I've got a, a there's a company called Spider that makes a calibration tool where you could you can actually calibrate the monitor, and it'll it'll be a uh, the, the colors that you see are will, will be the neutral neutral thing. Um, in uh, each each person's monitor, of course, is different, and uh, it, it sort of depends on what the end result is. Um, if if most of what you're seeing, if most of what you want to do is is post it uh, uh, online or or share it electronically, uh, probably the colors are are pretty close, unless you know that your monitor is way off. Um, the other method is what I'll what I'll do right now is I'll, I'm showing you how to uh, basically uh, correct for a lot of color deficiencies and that's by using um, the, the the red green and blue numbers um, in in a digital file uh, all the colors are made up of red green and blue as we know the, the colors of, of, of light and so if you put the uh, you take the eyedropper and you put it on a point there you look up at the upper right hand uh, corner and there's a, a, a column that says R G and B and th those are the uh, uh, the numbers, the, the numbers go from uh, 0 to 255. 
And, and so it'll show you the amount of red, green, and blue on that particular point that the, uh, here's our, um, our eyedropper. And as you move this around, you, you can see the numbers are moving because there's different, different parts of red, green, and blue. For, for the sky, it's, it's mostly about the same, but then if we move over to the rock, it'll, it'll change quite a bit. Um, if you had a very colorful uh, subject, it would change drastically from, from red to green to blue, depending on, on what you were actually, uh, actually pointed at. And so um, what I do is I go into, into here, uh, pick an area that's, that's just the sky, because otherwise you don't want to, um, you don't want to click on a star because that, the star will have color in it. And, but what you want is you want a neutral sky that's uh, basically a shade of gray. Um, you don't want, at this point, you don't want to make it black because it, uh, black in a photo means that there's, there's almost no, uh, no detail in, in that area and you, you may end up losing a lot of um, uh, some of the fainter stars. So I'll, I'll, I'll pick a point there and I'll click on it and, and then I'll zoom back. And a lot of it is just ex experimenting around. Uh, th does this, uh, does that look a shade of gray to you, a fairly neutral gray without any kind of color in it, uh, or does it look slightly off? Um, the center part of the Milky Way is a little bit bright. There might be a little bit of uh, dust in the in the air. And what I do is I look around. I, I put the eyedropper in different points, and and then see what. Uh, I try to avoid the, the center part of the Milky Way since there's a lot of stars and a lot of essentially a lot of interference. Where what what you want is is a, a neutral gray sky, the the background uh, background space essentially behind the uh, behind the stars, and the actual numbers here uh, don't matter at, at all. Uh, what matters is that uh, when when the RGB numbers, when the red, the green, and the blue numbers are all the same. It's, a, it's on the continuum of, of a shade of gray. It, it's, it's either black or white or some sort of gray in between, uh, but there's no other color that's, over, that's, that's uh, overwhelming another color, so that you have, uh, you, you have a, you, uh, a solid gray, and then that gray can be made uh, as, as black as you want it. Preston? Yeah, um, so you don't want to be sampling like a no, you want you want something relatively sort of uh, not necessarily at the center, but uh, not at the corners of the picture. You want to, you want further in. I always have trouble getting those numbers close when I'm, when I'm doing a little bit of Lightroom or a little bit of Photoshop. And I'm wondering um, if, it, if it helps to take like the contrast down or something like that. Or well, this is this is um, uh, it. it it kind of depends. Uh, Preston's question was just about uh, trying to get the numbers numbers right. Um, it, a lot of it is it, you. A lot of times you have to really blow up the image. And whoops, that's too much. We're out into infinity there. So and then find find the space because uh, if I'm if I'm at a lower resolution and I say, oh well, this looks clear, there might be a faint star there that I'm clicking on. Uh, so so you sort of Blow this up, and then you, you find you find an area between the stars, and and um, it, it takes some it takes some practice. All of this is just practice because if you, um, uh, like I, I think I, I tell a lot of the students in the other classes, um, I have the advantage of I, I'm a professional photographer, so I'm using Photoshop almost every single day, and, and anything that you practice at, all the time, you'll you'll get a lot better at. Um, and, and so, uh, I mean, everybody here is producing a lot of pictures, which is great. And I think uh, as long as you just keep practicing with the processing, then you'll, you'll start to get the hang of it. Um, Do you have a sample size preference for pictures? No, I think the, the default for this, um, for this tool is, I think it's 3 by 3 or something like that. But I've never changed it. I've just, I've just kept it at that. The, the, question, the, the drop light for this tool specifically is to set yeah, I'm setting the the, the gray point, the gray point. Uh, in in this because um, this is 
Uh, this is called the white balance tool. Okay. It's just it's an eyedropper. It's along the, the top edge of the uh, of, of camera raw, and uh, what it's doing is it's it's setting uh, what's referred to as, as white balance. It'll 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 set a, a a gray, basically a middle gray tone, and then every, every since that is that's the neutral part, uh, and as long as the object that you're uh, clicking on is, is is gray, then everything, all the other colors fall into place around it. It's like the portrait is a gray color. Right, right. The, the, the question was about, it's like a, uh, if you, you can take a portrait and someone could be holding um, a, a gray card and then you can click on that and all the colors will fall into place. The reds will be red, blues will be blues, and greens will be greens. And so, so a lot of the, um, oops, a lot of the uh, just finding the right point to click on, uh, it, it, it's just practice. You kind of keep doing it in, until, uh, until it looks good, until you get the numbers pretty close. The numbers don't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be 36, 36, and 36. This is 36, 35, and 36. So as long as there are one or two numbers from each other and that, that one, uh, one of the colors isn't drastically different than the others, then you're, then you're pretty close because you could kind of drive yourself crazy. You could be really close, and then if you keep on going, then all of a sudden you're farther away. And, and then you, gotta, you try to have to get back to the point that you started at. But th this is close enough, uh, close enough for me. So, uh, so, so I'll do that. And then I'll, um, I'll sort of look at, look at everything else. I won't do a whole lot of um, uh, changing around. If I don't need to, I, I won't do a lot of uh, changing around in the adjustments along here. I mean, you could do, you might do a little, I might add a little bit of contrast, but the, the problem with, with a lot of the uh, a lot of changing of these uh, sliders is that it, it does it uh, what's called globally. It'll change everything in the, uh, in the picture all at the same time. So the sky, the rocks, everything in your picture will go either go lighter or darker, uh, depending on on uh, how, how you do it. Um, and then I'll generally change uh, if if the color's good. Uh, uh, there's a couple other things you could do. In uh, both both Lightroom and Camera Raw have this feature, um, and it's called the Adjustment Brush Tool. And what it does is that you could you could pick specific parts of the picture uh, to work on. Um, if you, if, for example, if you just want to do something with the sky, uh, lighten it or change the color. If you just want to do something with the rocks, uh, you, you could do that. It's not as accurate as some of the tools in, uh, in uh, Photoshop once you get into Photoshop. Uh, but it's, it's pretty good for uh, things like fa if, if someone's face is in a shadow, uh, it, you can actually lighten the shadow up a little bit and, and it looks pretty natural. And, um, or you could go into... Uh, the rocks here. What uh, what it is is that you'll uh, once you click on this uh, adjustment brush tool, which is also up on the toolbar here, you could uh, make the uh, circle smaller or bigger uh, with the bracket keys. So the the left bracket key makes it smaller, the right bracket key uh, makes it bigger. Uh, and I think I just uh, clicked on something there. All right, get rid of that. Um, So, for example, if I if I just want to look at in this shadow, I want say I want a little bit more detail in the shadow. Uh, I'll hold the mouse down and and I'll uh, I'll paint along here. I'll just move it along here. It's essentially you 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 paint through this area. Go uh, move this back and forth, uh, and then I'll show you. Turn these to zero. So it's it's just affecting this area. That I painted right right around there, and as you can see, there's a little uh, the as you look down, you can control the size also down here with a with a slider. Feather is is uh, how fuzzy the the edge is. You can make it you can make it a, a sharp edge. Let me. Uh, I'll go back to zero on that. And so the feather is set to a, a, 
100. If I, if I set the feather to 0 and then uh, select an area up here, it's very hard. The, the edge is very hard, and so that it's, um, it, it becomes very hard. And generally, you want a little bit of feather, if, if not a lot of feather, because then uh, you, you don't want abrupt changes in, in where things like the contrast is in, in your photo. Uh, and then, so once I, uh, once I take a look at everything, uh, let's see, I think I went through a lot of these, uh, the, 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 I think in Lightroom, the series goes up and down, the, 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 the actual tools that, that you need to do. Uh, in, in Camera Raw here, the, the, essentially the same tools um, go left and right across this tab here. So then you just click on each tab and you'll get the different kinds of tools. Uh, this is basic, tone curves, um, detail. Most of these I don't really do too much with. I'll look at the lens correction because uh, I might... I might say remove chromatic aberration from uh, sometimes there's a little bit of chromatic aberration around stars uh, due, to, due to your lens. Uh, I'll do a little bit of the uh, vignette control. If you go to the plus side uh, it makes the edges much brighter. You could, you could see if you look just look at the edges of the pictures you could see how bright they get. Uh, I don't do that too much because it'll if you do it too much it'll it'll start to show up a, as you're processing and then you have to so, somehow correct it. So I might do it, uh, do it a, a little bit. Uh, you don't the, use the, uh, the lens correction for the music? The, um, the second choice uh, property profile. Yeah, right here. Uh, in the it was before first tab. Oh, the first tab. Yeah. You never use enable profile correction? Oh, uh, I, I actually do. I think I have, I think I have some, uh, some of my, yeah, these lenses are in there. And that actually works out pretty good, too. Uh, this is a 14 to 24 yeah. millimeter, and it, sometimes you click on that, it'll read the information in your, uh, uh, in the information on the file, and then it'll it'll apply a correction due to the, uh, with with the camera and the lens that you have. So uh, that that often works too. It um, it, it can it, sometimes it can con uh, correct some distortion, uh, and then sometimes it could actually add some distortion that you might not want. So. Uh, it's just a matter of looking at it and seeing if, if that works for your particular picture for that kind of landscape that you have or if it, or if it doesn't work. Um, this one's not bad. It, it didn't, uh, it, you can see that it actually changed, changed it a little bit. Uh, you can sort of see the, the center part of it go, go in and out of this picture when I, if I click back and forth. Uh, and it also makes it, makes it a little bit brighter. So uh, I'll, I'll probably just leave it like that and then we can work on this uh, in, in Photoshop. So once I... Once I've done all that, clarity is something, the, the clarity, vibrance, and saturation, you don't really want to deal too much with in, in, the, in the camera raw because uh, people tend to overdo that. If the clarity, uh, it, it affects the, the highlights and increases the contrast around things like stars a, a little bit so that um, it'll sometimes enhance it. There, there's, a, there's a danger of doing too much of it, but uh, you, you don't really want to do too much of that. And I think I want to yeah, reduce the vignetting because it's already dealt with there. So I will, um, what I also will do is I'll hold down the uh, Alt key, which is also the Command key, I think. Oh no, Option key. Uh, and I'll open a copy of this because I, I uh, generally I don't like to alter the original, the raw file that I'm working on. So um, if, if you hold down the Alt uh, or the Option key, there's a, a setting down in the lower right where it'll say Open Copy. And that'll open it straight into uh, Photoshop. Uh, 